Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody has had an unbelievable week. I hope that everything that you set out to do, you accomplished it. But if you didn't, remember, the story continues. Uh, if I can leave you with anything before I get started, if I can just leave you with this. Failure is non-existent in a continuous event. In other words, when you see life as it truly is, the story continues. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. If you're still breathing, there's another opportunity awaiting you. If you're still breathing, you have a chance to do what you have not yet done. So failure isn't it isn't truly existence because failure in its truest concept is a finite idea it means that it's not going to happen you did you tried and it didn't happen you may have what i call micro failures where you're trying and you're not succeeding but you're learning from them so the story continues you take what you learn and you continue so no matter what has happened this week no matter what what has happened to the to this point in your life no matter what's happened to this point in this year you still have an opportunity to win so stand up square your shoulders look life dead in the eye and say i'm built for this and then you get up and you consistently learn from the mistakes you make and your setbacks and you gain ground daily uh that i just had to leave that with you um before i get into it this is part two of relationship wednesday uh we were uh abruptly cut off system some kind of system failure uh, I don't know what it was, but I didn't get a chance to get back and do the second part of what was left off. Uh, so I'm going to finish it up live today. Uh, we, we were talking about uh, defining true love. We were talking about the notion of romance and how it has been interjected into uh, the love equation, the marriage okay, uh, equation, the relationship equation over the last, let's say, uh, 700 years or so that's how long romance has been a part of this equation and yet it is given such gravity that we tend to build unrealistic expectations uh, of our partners of ourselves and of life and when those expectations aren't met we become disenfranchised with the en entire idea of love I want to finish what I was talking about on that uh, which isn't going to take long but I want to close the loop on that but I also want to remind you, if you want uh, a comprehensive installment of my take on marriage, specifically marriage and how it must be approached, how it must be engaged, how each partner must take it on their roles and everything else, as well as my addressing what I call the dating myth. You want to get book number 23, which is Merging Souls, Healing, Hope, and Restoration in Modern Marriage. Uh, the link is in the box. Also, for the final time, um, we are at the Visionetics Institute offering uh, the Rapid Change Breakthrough Program, which is somewhat of a uh, mutated version of my Rapid Change Breakthrough sessions, which are one session which I get with a client and I help them get through something that's blocking them from doing what it is they want to do. And it, I do it in one session. Those sessions are normally $350, but what we're doing right now with the Rapid Change Breakthrough Program, uh, for the last and final time we're offering it, is offering it to the public three sessions for half, less than half the price. For $150, you get three sessions. Uh, so the value is absolutely there. Uh, it's a chance to work one-on-one -on -one with yours truly. It's a chance to get some of those things that have been blocking what it is you're trying to do in life and learning how to face them and deal with that. There's absolutely nothing that can't be done. The question is, how dedicated are you? How committed are you? Do you have the self-discipline to follow through? And is your why big enough to withstand the difficulty, the challenges. I believe it was Will Smith I heard say that he believes that God put everything worth in life worth having on the other side of fear. Uh, I agree. I also think it's on the other side of pain, and we are pain averse. We don't, we don't, we don't want to do. If, it, if it's going to be, make, if it's going to make us uncomfortable, we don't want to deal with it. So we live in our corner of comfort, and we tend to meander through the maze of mediocrity and barely do 
anywhere close to what we're capable of because we don't want the discomfort that comes along with the process. But see, the process always precedes the promise. If you want to tap into your promise, sign up for that uh, Rapid Change Breakthrough Program. Like I said, this is the last time we're going to offer it because I simply do not have the time capacity to deal with that type of volume uh, with what we're doing at the Visionetics Institute and other things within Rick Wallace Enterprises. So uh, this is going to be my last go at it. And I'm, I've had a ball over the last couple of years doing this over the uh, course of you know several months at a time. And so I'm looking, looking, looking forward to what's going to come out of this. If you want to experience change, I mean change. I don't mean an emotional charge. I mean literal change. Something that you can take with you after the encounter and consistently apply to your life and see results. You want to sign up for this. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about finishing where we are. You know, uh, all of this, all of this discussion on defining love came from a conversation that uh, I heard on the Ricky Smiley show, where even Marcel was talking about someone approached her while she was eating lunch, and it was a guy, and he had gotten into a relationship. And I'm gonna, if you want to know the whole story, watch part one. Uh, but basically, the marriage didn't work out, and now uh, he gave the woman his blessing. She found someone else she wanted to be with. He gave her his blessings, but she moved on, but he didn't. He's just that he doesn't want to pursue love anymore. He doesn't believe at his age that love is a, 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 an alternative or, alternative or an option. And so the question came up, is there a cutoff point at which you no longer are able to fall in love? And so I talked about it from the, the perspective of understanding true love versus the notion of infatuation and this idea of romanticism where we romanticize love and so it's all about the ooh ah feeling that we get when we meet a person and as time grows and you get to know a person well familiarity tends to breed contempt the more you get to know a person the more of the luster starts to come off because you start to discover their humanity and the problem is in many marriages is no one is willing to deal with the humanity of their spouse they are wanting to hang on to the romantic notion of what they saw in the beginning the idea of the prince charming the idea of the prince and the princess and all of these things and tend to lose sight of the notion of the reality and that this is a partnership built on covenantal uh commitment that says we will get through this no matter what and there there will be some times when i'm counseling you know i'm real honest with the uh couples i'm when i'm doing couples counseling i'm real honest with the couples and here's why you have to be one of the biggest problems whether it's finance or whatever it is you know you can you can look at all the uh data that tells you what what what's at the core of divorces but at the very core of it all whether it's finance whether it's cheating what what it is it's a failure to meet expectations there's an expectation you have of your spouse and when that expectation isn't met there is a level of disquietude that simply sits in and over time it builds uh, that's why communication is so key in relationships. Uh, the idea of going into something and if it's going to be perfect is a guaranteed setup for failure because there's no such thing. But I tell my my clients, my couple clients, that look, there are going to be times in this relationship where you're going to look at him or her, and you're going to sit up and go, "I don't like you today." That's the reality of it. That's the reality. If you think you're going to be in love and just ooh ah every moment of your relationship, you're going to have a rude awakening. And if you're not prepared to deal with it, it's going to cause a significant upheaval in your relationship. The truth of the matter is, your relationship, if you look at the vows, it never says as long as you make me feel good and happy. It says through sickness and health, through richness, uh, through rich or poor, uh, and sickness and health. Uh, through good or bad, all this other stuff like that. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always going to... You want the most of your marriage to be good, so you have to work together. You have to be in units. You have to have an idea of we, where each other is headed. You have to have, have an idea 
of what each other desires. Because see, one of the biggest problems I find in marriage is that we buy into that old erroneous concept of do unto others. And say, what do you mean? What do you mean do unto others as you have them do unto you? Why is that? Why would that be an erroneous concept? Because not everybody will feel um, satiated or satisfied or happy when you treat them the way you want to be treated because in their life their value system may be different than yours and how you treat yourself or how you want to be treated may not be how they want to be treated in specific now everybody wants to be treated well but how do you define well i give you a prime example that i give all of my clients say uh my wife likes ice cream i'm not a real big fan of ice cream i eat it occasionally but not not a real big fan of ice cream so if my wife went out and said man i'm gonna really do something really special for my husband i'm gonna get him this whatever f f favorite thing she likes and she brings it home and she gives it to me well number one i'm gonna be thankful because she thought of me but is it gonna make me feel like oh my god she got me exactly what i wanted so it, it, am I being treated how I want to be treated or are you treating me how you want to be treated? And that's the thing that we have to really look at in relationships. Am I treating my spouse the way they want to be treated or am I treating them the way I want to be treated? Because they're not me. And that's the one thing you have to understand. While you're becoming one, you have to also understand that that person is not you. And that person has a unique set of desires, a unique set of needs, a unique set of expectations. And you have to be in tune with those. You have to know what they are. You have to sit up and you have to uh, strive for them. But the truth of the matter is, no matter what, no matter how in tune you are, there are going to be times that you're going to look at your spouse and you're simply going to go, man, I'm not feeling you today. And But it's in that point that you refer back to law number one, the covenant. The covenant says that I'm not in this just for the feel-good moment. I'm not in this because you make me happy. I should be able to make myself happy. I'm in this because together, we, I believe there's something that we can do unique and special that my masculine energy and your feminine energy comes together and we create this synergy that allows us to create a powerful force that without one another, we can't. And so together we're more powerful functioning as a unit than if we were, say, on our own, which you can still do some unbelievable and exceptional, extraordinary things, phenomenal things on your own. But you should be, when you're in a relationship, you should be able to do more in the relationship than you can outside the relationship. If you're in a relationship and it's inhibiting you, you probably need to really sit back and look at it. If you're in a relationship and it's choking the life out of who you are, you probably need to reevaluate the relationship. And and really truly see uh, if it's something that can be worked out because in the relationship you should have the freedom and the liberation to rise and be your best self. If you can't be your best self in the relationship then there's a problem but see we got to get out of the romantic notion of what is and get into the true nature of what love is. Love is a, benef uh, a benevolent engagement in which I give of myself at a greater level than of myself and what do i mean by that i mean that love says that i'm willing to give a part of me to you a, a best the best part of me to you so that you can be the best you that you can be and that i will think of you before i think of myself it doesn't mean that i'm not going to think of myself and not and, and people say well how am i possibly supposed to put somebody before myself and protect myself see that's the beauty of love you can only trust yourself in a true relationship to be everything you can be through sacrifice when you know the person on the other side is doing the same see I don't have to worry so much about the things I really need in my relationship with my wife because she's thinking about them she's thinking about my health she's thinking about my nutrition she's thinking about the time and space i need to be by myself she's one she's a little manager hey why don't you go do this with with the guys why don't you go did, did you get to the gym today she's 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 on that so what can i do in turn i can invest in her now i can invest hey did you get this up on this channel did you get that up on that channel things that i'm good at that she may not be as good at i'm 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 investing in her now because where i'm going to be uh stepping away to invest in her she's filling in and so there's this unified uh movement of oneness that while i'm taking care of you you're taking care of me that has to be present it has to be present and the idea is look no matter what happens on those days i'm not feeling and like i make it a notion 
and uh, I share this with my clients, I make it a notion that when I'm feeling some kind of way about something my wife has done, that I actually treat her better during that time than I do when we're just normally going, everything's great. So it doesn't change. My behavior towards her doesn't change to where I'm being ill treated. Uh, that, you know, and that, that's always things I'm working on. One thing that I normally do when I'm upset is I get quiet. That's something I'm still working on. But I make sure she doesn't carry anything heavy. I don't care how mad I am. You're not picking that up. You're not opening that door. You're not doing any of that. I'm taking all that out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I got it. Nothing changes in what I am required to do as her husband because I'm upset. Matter of fact, I try to treat her better when I'm upset. Why? Because that's my covenantal responsibility. That's the promise I made. That's the vow I took. And so that's what relationship, relationship is about covenant. Love is about giving of oneself outside of the romanticism. See, we've got so much gravity on romanticism and we've commodified a great deal of the relationship. What can I get? And so when I'm not getting anything materially from the relationship, I tend to view it as non-productive. I forget about the covering. I forget about the spiritual connection. I, I forget about the leadership. I forget about the support, the affirmation, the confirmation, and all of these things that we work intertwined together to provide one another. You forget, it's just, I, I didn't get this. I didn't get that. I, well, 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 sometimes that's not going to be there. Sometimes life is going to be kind of tough and things aren't going to be coming the way you want them to materially. But when you have a spiritual connection, when that person is still praying for you, when that person is still speaking, power over you and that person is still speaking into your life nothing but positivity no matter what's going on especially when you are having uh some disenfranchisement and you're at all and that person is still speaking you are powerful you are exceptional you are extraordinary you're beautiful you're handsome you are this you are that and they're still speaking it that's where the love is the love is in even though we're not on the same page i got you i'm holding you down now, this, this isn't about holding somebody down that's absolutely not holding you down. This is about understanding that there are going to be difficult moments and that sometimes a person isn't going to be at their best. But see, that's the beauty of love. Love says when you're not at your best, I'm going to be good enough for the both of us. And I need you to do the same for me. That's what love is. Love says okay I see you having some difficult times right now instead of getting upset with you because you're having that those bad times I am going to literally be good enough for the both of us I'm going to love hard enough for the both of us I'm going to be in, in entrenched in holding things up for the both of us until you get through your moment because you are human and in your humanity it doesn't make room for perfection and so i not only am going to be tolerant of your humanity i'm going to embrace it i'm going to really truly love it because it what's it's what makes you you so the the answer is you're never too old to fall in love you know you may be too old to get the giddy feeling all over again because life has shown you that what, what follows the giddy feeling enough the older you get you know okay after this giddy feeling reality sets in and then there's work that has to be done so that may not be there and and the youthfulness uh, that come the youthfulness that allows for that isn't there but that's okay what you're looking for is someone who sees the value in you and you see the value in them and in that, you build something exceptional. In that, you build something extraordinary. In that, you build something long living. And in that, you have what most people desire but never experience, authentic, true love. On that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. As I, don't forget, if you're ready to really truly make a change, look at the, in, in the description box and click that link and sign up for the rapid change program if you really want to see where i go with this relationship thing and you know my point of view and and and, and really find some real true uh concepts techniques and principles that will allow you to 
build a strong, loving, and lasting relationship, you want to get merging souls. Uh, the link to that book, my 23rd book, is, is also in the description box. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. My challenge to you is to do the same. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an well, unbelievable special day. Announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Jay, people talk Real about talk, the I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.